everyone, it's me, X Canadensis, and it's been a while. Um, basically, YouTube's just refusing to give me my comments back. Um, they told me that they would, but still haven't been, and I just don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> Um, so I just haven't been inspired to upload, but that's not really fair to you guys, and a lot of you guys have been really excited to see this year's Disney Designer Dolls unboxing videos, and I actually did record a video for the Disney, the D23 Tiana and Giselle unboxing that I did, but it's kind of awful, so we're just gonna scrap that one. Leggy, can you get down on it? She's... I have the laptop on a wobbly table right now, so I don't want her to knock it over, but anyway, today... I went to the Disney store, we woke up at 2 a.m. Um, and bought this lady, this is Esmeralda, which was the first release of the Minette Masquerade line. And um, so yeah, I woke up at 3 a.m. Or I woke up at 2 a.m. I got there at like four, a little before four, I think. Um, so basically, <laughs> last year when I would show up around 4 a.m., I would be like sixth in line. And for the designer premiere dolls, that was okay because I knew that the store that I was going to would get around 15. And I'm going to the same store this year, but I didn't know how many that they were going to get of the masquerade dolls. So I wanted to make sure that I was early. So I get there absolutely vacant. There's like a couple cars in the parking lot. So I thought maybe people were already inside. I went to the door that I went to last year for the Disney store. It was locked. And this is at 4 a.m. <laughs> um, and then I tried every other door at the store or at the mall and they were all locked <laughs> as well. So I was like, hmm. So me and uh, Brett actually came with me this year. Doesn't like being in videos, it's fine. But he came with me this year, which I love. I'm really excited about it. And I hope he continues because it makes it a lot more bearable um, because it was gonna be six hours of waiting for the Disney store to open. <laughs> um, <coughs> just choked on my own spit. Um, so we just go sit in the car. I'm sitting there freaking out like what if there's a secret door open somewhere that I'm not aware of and everybody gets inside and gets in line first and I don't get my doll and uh, but no, nobody showed up until, gosh, seven? Three hours before the store opened? Or I said six hours earlier. It was, I showed up at four, yeah, four or six hours. Nobody started showing up until around seven. So this this um, older lady with, she wasn't that much older than me, and she had young kids, she must have been like 30. Um, I hope that's not offensive to her. Um, she was super nice though, she showed up and she asked me because she was newer to the area, I guess. Um, sorry, I'm plugging my computer, it went dull a little bit. Um, she asked me if I'd ever been to a release at this store before, how many they get, if I know how it goes, and I told her about that and she told me, and she showed me pictures of her collection, she's actually, been collecting since the first Snow White, and she has all of them except very few. Um, she she obviously hasn't bought all the ones because she doesn't buy the ones that she doesn't like, but she still has the vast majority of them. And um, and she's missing Ariel, and I don't know. This is random, but I just I was shocked. I've never met like that big of a collector before, so I was really in awe. And she was super super nice. But anyway, she she showed up at seven thirty, and then everyone else came in around like eight eight thirty. I was just baffled because I'd been there for so long, but it's fine. So now I know for the next releases. Um, also, I'm pretty sure this doll has not sold out online yet. By this point, it's noon um, in Texas right now, and I'm pretty sure she's still in stock online. Um, but here she is. So for starters, this isn't a dust cover. This is actually like a piece of the box that you have to... I mean, it is still like a cover thing, but you have to like unhook it to get it off. I hate this. It like this is so pretty, but if you want to display the doll completely in box and you're like actually like I'm obviously not concerned with it, but most people collect these dolls in box, right? If you want this piece of the box, you'd either have to keep it somewhere super special and separate or like just display it like this where you can't see the doll. Like what? I didn't pay $140 by the way. They raised the price for a box, but anyway. Um also, if you guys didn't know, this year the dolls are first come first serve. So, um me showing up at the store um, so early felt justified this time. All right, so I actually have not seen my doll yet because the, the they weren't letting us open them in the store, which I understand, but she let me peek at the eyes and make sure they looked okay through the um, the holes. But yeah, here's this, and it says Esmeralda on the side, super pretty. And then let me look at her. Gosh, she's so pretty. Y'all, I was a little bit nervous about her face uh, mold when I saw her online, but I saw her from far away in the store and I was in awe. She looked so good. 
She's so beautiful. Like, I don't think she's, she would be great at like taking selfies. She would probably be a little self-conscious about it, but my God, this doll is beautiful. Y'all are gonna see her, it's gonna be great. So it says, the Disney's done. The Disney Designer Collection is proud to introduce the Midnight Masquerade series inspired by the magic of moonlit balls and the elegance of beloved Disney heroines. Designed by Disney Store artists, this doll comes with an intricately crafted mask which features iconic motifs. It will add a touch of exquisite gra glamour to any collection. And it retails for $140. It actually doesn't say that on the little price tag, which is strange. It's just like a blank price tag. Um, and it says it comes with a COA. Um, and the box is... I like this box. I like this piece. I think it's really cool. I kind of wish this, this cool motif, like this is really cool. What if they had like put it in gold foil here or something? And it would be better than having to keep whatever this is. But I guess this counts as a dust cover, whatever. Um, and it says Esmeralda, one of 5,200. Um, it's in this really nice like ref um, iridescent mauve color. The art on the back is so stunning. Um, it's such a cool, cool doll. And then the bottom just has, you know, the copyright info in gold foil. And yeah, so let's start unboxing her. I believe this is a separate piece. Sorry, I didn't get to unbox my Giselle and Tiana completely because my my friend Disney Designer shout out because I don't know if I'm ever gonna upload that video because I'd have to edit a lot. Um, he had to open them up partially for me. So he left them on the backing and sent me the pieces of the box, but he had to cut them up because the boxes were so enormous that he didn't have space in a suitcase because he also bought all of the D23 dolls too. Um, so yeah, there were a lot of dolls and if you don't like live in the immediate area or you have to like fly out, it's a problem. <laughs> um, this is really tight. I can't get it off. Come on. Get out of here, Esmeralda. Um, but yeah, I was really shocked at how um, unpopular this release seems to be. Like, the fact that it's not sold out online, the fact that nobody showed up to my Disney store until very late was very concerning. Um, luckily, around like seven people came for the doll, and I believe my store had like eight to ten of them. But here she is. Look how good she looks. Like, right, there's another layer, by the way, to the box. Here it is. Oh, I got a low number. I This is one of the lowest numbers I've ever gotten for a Disney store doll. This is 514 pretty cool. I told my boyfriend to pick one because he's really good at blind boxes. I'm kidding, you can't be good at them, it's just random luck. But um, <laughs> I had him pick which one and he picked right. Um, and she is absolutely beautiful. She has a huge gob of um, hairspray or hair gel just across her face. Um, so I'll have to be getting that off. But let's start snipping. Um, please don't leave any comments like y'all did last year about how I unboxed the doll wrong. I spent my money on this and I'm not... Fun fact, I don't collect my dolls because I think that they're worth a lot of money or for a status symbol. I just really like them. So leave me alone about how I open my dolls. Someone really had the audacity last year, like multiple people to be like, oh, you don't open your dolls right. Like, ooh, it's like, like you're gonna ruin the fabric. It's like, if it was actually going to ruin the fabric, I wouldn't have done it that way, guys. But whatever, go off. I don't know. People, Disney collectors especially are so nitpicky with everything. All right. Sorry, this is gonna be the boring part. I probably should have saved all the talking for this part. Um, the box is really impressive. It makes it harder to open the doll, but most people don't open them. Um, oh, look how I'm doing it the way that I did it last year and I'm not ripping the dress, isn't that weird? Sorry, I'm a little bit bit. I'm a little bit bitter. I think people need to mind their own dang business and leave me alone. <laughs> um, but I am so excited for this girl. Um, and the rest of this set, this, this set I'm super hyped for and I'm, Although I don't like, I don't like that this doll had is having trouble selling out. That's worrisome um, for the future of dolls like this one that are kind of rarer characters or like characters that have never been made into dolls before. I know this one has a few dolls. I own them, so don't come at me with that. But you know what I mean? Like just, they don't really make dolls of this character. So it's really cool to see them. And it would be a real bummer if, cause for example, the D23 sets, Giselle didn't even sell out by the end, and she was one of the ones that people, like, were su supposedly everyone was super hyped for and everybody wanted. So, I think even though Disney clearly heard our request and was like, okay, we'll make some rarer characters this year, clearly the fans did not pull through with that. And some people are saying it's the quality and stuff. I think they're fine quality dolls and I will continue to buy them. I think they're wonderful. 
unless they like absolutely toilet out the quality i think they're great and i understand that the doll um industry is going through a lot but i also understand that people have really high standards for what they spend their money on and that is 100 percent acceptable and it's probably better than just blindly buying everything that comes out you know um but i'm just i really like dolls i don't really mind if they're not perfect um was i going with that you know Oh, so it's really worrisome that Disney is going to see this as, okay, I guess maybe don't ever make an Esmeralda doll again, because she didn't sell out. And for Giselle, too. I mean, how many Giselle sets were there? 900 in the whole world. And they were heavily scalped, too, and they still didn't sell out. And I think partially why, as this is just me speculating, obviously, but I think part of the reason that Esmeralda did not sell out super early today and that nobody came to the stores is because there's no incentive for scalpers to come get her, right? Because Giselle is like the scalp one. There's only 900 in the world and she's from G23. Even Ursula or Vanessa is not selling super, super well secondhand. And scalpers are, as much as I hate scalpers, they're actually an important part of the market, you know? Like they, they build the aftermarket and they actually help drive the prices down. Because if only collectors were to buy this Esmeralda, it, it happened with the Snow White designer doll. Not a lot of scalpers bought her, so mostly collectors bought her. And that means that she's more expensive because the collectors drive the value already. With all that being said, all that nonsense that we were using to fluff the time, here is my Esmeralda doll. She is so pretty. I was worried about her face sculpt, not gonna lie. I was worried that this would be my, one of my least favorite ones, but oh my god, I'm, I was so wrong. So, on AliExpress a while back, which is a Chinese, like, auction site, but a lot of factory rejects and samples and stolen things get on there, um, a couple weeks ago, maybe like a month ago, a bunch of um, heads from this line were leaked there and a bunch of people bought them. And I wasn't impressed. They did not look good. Like, I did not like the way her face sculpt was. However, I will say that with the eyelashes, it fixes it 100%. Um, partially, it's probably that partially what I didn't like about it was that the eyes looked kind of funky and it's because there were supposed to be beautiful eyelashes on there and I'm very happy with it. I also, I bought the Vanessa head and ooh, not cute. I have her, but I don't know. Um, but here is my Esmeralda. Her hair is super nice. It's actually like really good soft quality. I know sometimes they use crappier quality hair because it looks nicer, but like this is really soft. Like, um... I don't want to guess because I'm always wrong on hair types, but it's super soft is my point. And it's actually not heavily gelled. Like this one doesn't have almost any gel in it, but the ones in the front like this one have a lot of gel in it, in them. Um, and then let me get this tie out. There we go. Here is her mask. I don't know anything about masks, but it's very nice. Um, sorry, there's certain things on here that I'm really excited to tell you about and certain things on here that I'm like, uh, I don't know. Um, there's her beautiful, beautiful face and she's got one earring intentionally, hopefully. My Giselle, um, prim or not premiere, my Giselle Midnight Masquerade doll, brand new in box. There's a picture of her in box at the store, did not come with her crown. <laughs> like, how did that, how does that even happen? Um, super pretty face, one earring. So that's why I was a little bit nervous when I saw one earring, but I think it's, uh, it's, I think it's a Giselle thing. It's a very, Giselle. I think it's an Esmeralda thing. It's such a pretty hoop earring here. Um, and then she has just a simple chain necklace. It actually feels like metal. Um, mine has kind of, I'm shocked by this, a messed up trim right here. I don't know if you can see it, but right here it's like fraying upwards. Not great, I'll try to fix that, but I'm worried about making it fray worse, but that does not look good. Um, not that big of a deal, it's not something I'll ever notice again, but if I'm being nitpicky for the video, there's something. Um, and there is her bodice. It has super pretty, like, kipau type of um, embroidery on it, and it's actually embroidered. It's not just applique, it's really nice. Um, and then there's also embroidery on the uh, shawl that she's got here. I used the wrong word for shawl or something last year and I got like several mean comments about it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't really know. It's like a thingy. It's a drape. I think it was a drape. I think that was the word I meant last year. Who knows? Um, and the dress is multiple layers. I believe this purple piece- oh, I left the wire in. This purple piece is separate. Yeah, 
So this purple piece separates... Oh, hello. I'm sorry, I was wrong. The purple piece is the skirt. So the skirt and the shirt are separate pieces. I guess the skirt and the bodice, but all the skirt is one piece. Okay. Um, and the shawl obviously is separate. And skirt is very detailed and layered. So the first layer, we've got some metal chain. I'm gonna get a little bit closer. We've got some more metal chain detailing and this chain has a bit more to it. It's got some like little flower shaped things intermittently. And then we've got this gold belt um this really dark like deep royal purple top skirt and the pattern does continue on to the back with this gold this is like a applique iron-on type of thing and then underneath we've got surprisingly sloppy stitching but um it's okay because it's hidden uh, for the second layer of the skirt, and it is red, and it's got gold foil appliques, and a gold foil. It's supposed to emulate, like, a ribbon trim, but it's ironed on. But, you see, it's like, it's some kind of iron-on. But they did actually finish the bottom, even though they did that, which I appreciate. And then, another layer of the skirt. Um, I can't really get it because it's tied down, and I don't want to, like, super mess up the... So I'll show you the back. Here we go. Um... It's the purple fabric again, but with a gold applique and this really fancy trim pattern. Um, so that is the dress, and all of it continues onto the back reasonably well. Um, like, there's no crazy mismatching, at least on my doll. I think it looks great. And then um, this little shawl thing she's got has gold tassels and rhinestones to be like stars. And then we've got this moon. Yeah, that's the moon, kids sun and moon and uh, stars. Very nice, very pretty. Um, yeah. Oh, and she's got two separate bangle type bracelets here and two more right here on her other hand. I believe the, so the articulation this year, I don't know how to explain this to you and I'm gonna try my best. I'm gonna get Giselle to show you this actually because she has nothing on her arms. So, should I get another doll? I'm gonna try to convey this to you, but basically, I'm sorry. <laughs> the older dolls have, like the other um, designer dolls, at least the ones that I have, they have a normal joint where you move like this. But these dolls for some reason have what almost feels like a click joint, but it's still this hinge joint or semi ball joint, but it's, they do this as you move them up. Like they have clicks in, so you can't like do a subtle movement. Let me show you. You see that? It like clicks into certain positions. It's very weird and I can't figure out, and it's like this on all of mine um, in Esmeralda too. Yeah. Um, it's weird. You can hear it. You probably can't hear it, but like, I don't know what it's about. It's kind of strange, but um, yeah, I just thought I'd mention it. I don't like it and the wrists do it too, so. I, I don't think I'm- I think this is the ravings of a madman right now, but just take my word for it. Um, and then underneath her skirt, she's got this big- I'm sorry, Esmeralda. <laughs> um, when she does her pretty twirls, you can see her legs, it's okay. She's got this um, tissue paper um, crinoline under here. Um, and unfortunately, she is wearing flats, although that does fit her character, so I'll give it a pass this time. She is wearing little like ballet type flats, but they're kind of a more, I don't know the word, like you'd see them in a, I'm not saying this because I know that she's from a poorer background, but like a village type of like a leather shoe that somebody in the village, like a cobbler made himself, like sewed it together with his hands. It looks like that, like a, almost like a ballet flat. <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, guys. Here is Esmeralda. I cannot wait for the rest of this line. I think Esmeralda is a fantastic doll, and if she's still available by the time this video comes up, goes up, which is gonna be a while, like it's gonna be several hours. Because videos take a minimum of 10 hours to upload at my new apartment, because the Wi-Fi is that bad. This is, this is just little reasons that I haven't been uploading, just, just letting you know. Um, oh, that hair gel smells really good. I'm sorry, I'm weird. It like smells really good. Anyway, 
gorgeous doll. Absolutely gorgeous. This is, by the way, her angle for sure. She looks so good like that. Such a pretty doll. Highly recommend her if you can get her or, um, if you're on the fence about unboxing her, I think you should because there's so many details to this doll. This is a, this is probably going to be the standout dress-wise in the set because, like, who mama her dress? It's insanely detailed, like, especially compared to the other ones. Rapunzel, oh my god, what are you wearing, girl? Like, somebody needs to talk to Rapunzel. Um, I guess she, her mother did not teach her fashion because she was locked in a tower. Um, wow. Anyway, her, her fake mother. <sighs> Sorry guys, I've been up since 2am. I slept two hours, so I am going to go take a nap. Um, which sucks because I really want to play with my Esmeralda, but, um, m your girl needs sleep. So, let's place her here. She's so beautiful. She's just kind of off. <laughs> there we go. Um, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Let me know what you- th there's no comments. Well, if there happen to be comments, like you're watching this in the future, let me know what you think of Giselle. Esmeralda! I keep, sorry, I've been raving about Giselle for so long. Um, let me know what you think about Esmeralda and um, how you feel about Esmeralda being released. Um, and whatever else you feel inclined to answer, I'd love to hear it. Um, hopefully we get the comments back soonish. This isn't a channel for kids, but I'm gonna be marked as one because I talk about dolls, so... Who knows? YouTube has a lot of crazy policy changes and disasters and mistakes happening right now, so... I might just be screwed, and I don't know what I'm gonna do, but... I have really enjoyed making videos for the past eight years on this channel, and... Watching it grow, and us growing together, and the cool community we built. Um, anyway, if you wanna come talk to if you want to contact me about anything, contact me on my Instagram. It's xcanadensis, the same way it's spelled here. I'm a little bit absent from my Instagram right now because I'm just frustrated with a lot of things that were going amiss in the community. But, gosh. Sorry, I just remembered the number that I got. Um, but yeah, that is the best way to reach me is my Instagram, at xcanadensis. Anyways, thank you guys so, so much for watching. For real this time, bye!